morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather update nationwide for Wednesday the 14th of May 2025. There's a lot to crack through today. We've got a low pressure system now situated just offshore from southeast Queensland and this is funneling some showers and some gusty winds into southeast Queensland. We'll start off with this but just to note that there will be some heavy rain coming out of this system for the next 10 days across the New South Wales coastline as well. It really is quite a busy period. If you are brand new to the channel please consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things this morning here. As you can see a weak low pressure system now just beginning to build offshore from uh, Fraser Island and then down along the Sunshine Coast and you can see that quite clearly in the last couple of minutes of the satellite uh, action here. This is the latest satellite frame with the radar imagery overlaid. You can see that little low pressure system just offshore from Double Island Point right now where winds are currently blowing at about 40 to 45 kilometers an hour out of the southeast. In fact a little bit stronger as you get down towards the Cape Morton Lighthouse area as well. Winds are quite blowy along the central Queen, uh, the southeast Queensland coastline this morning. Now this this is a classic case of a developing low pressure system offshore from the eastern uh, states. We see this time and time again every single year. There's nothing to be concerned about here, but the proximity that this low pressure system is to the coastline and the fact that it is currently situated over some warmer than average waters, I am concerned about some of the rainfall facts, uh, for some of the rainfall numbers that we could see throughout the remainder of today and into early tomorrow morning. And I was watching this yesterday on the forecast modeling and thinking to myself, this does look like a relatively good setup that we could be seeing some kind of convergence zone developing later on tonight. Certainly a good line of showers and storms could go in towards the southeast corner of Queensland. That's exactly what the forecast models are suggesting right now. The rainfall is going to steadily pick up throughout the remainder of today and it will be at its heaviest much later on tonight between 10 o'clock and about 2 o'clock early tomorrow morning with the heaviest falls expected around Stradbroke Island and then down along Coomera and then down to the Gold Coast as we get in towards very early tomorrow morning with heavy falls expected into the northeast of New South Wales as well. You can see these reds here indicating falls between 20 and 30 millimetres an hour and again slow moving down the southeast Queensland coastline with them being around the Brisbane centre at around you know, 10 or 11 o'clock tonight and then uh, by sunrise tomorrow they've only crept down towards Lismore and Cape Byron so again a very slow moving band of showers expected to be associated here and with this low pressure system situated just offshore we're going to see this driving shower bands just moved ashore in towards southeast Queensland and northeast New South Wales. Now rainfall accumulation numbers still a little bit murky at this point in time especially considering we are talking about a pretty low resolution forecast model right now that being the east and west but you can see between the uh, convective forecast models there are some pretty serious rainfall accumulations on the forecast and some of these numbers are actually pushing into what I'd consider the accurate category right now now obviously the heaviest falls which are suggested by the convective forecast model of 300 millimeters they're not going to happen we can write those off completely that's just not simply get, not not going to happen at this point in time but the falls between 25 and 55 millimeters pushing 60 or 70 millimeters in some locations along the sunshine coast they're in entirely possible and then as you can see some of the heaviest falls down around the Gold Coast area as well pushing 70 to 80 millimeters if we do get bands of rainfall moving into these regions that sit themselves over locations for two or three hours at a time 70 or 80 millimeters is definitely on the cards so southeast Queensland northeast New South Wales there is some rainfall coming into your locations later on tonight it's not serious rainfall at this point in time like it's not going to be causing flooding but we certainly can be waking up to some pretty significant rainfall accumulations tomorrow morning falls will be at their heaviest around the Gold Coast and into the northeast of New South Wales with totals up to 75 millimetres possible. However, widespread falls between 10 and 40 millimetres is what's going to be expected along southeast Queensland and into northeast New South Wales with falls above 10 millimetres not expected as we get further inland. There's also plenty of rainfall as well moving in towards the interior parts of Queensland as well. We're expecting some shower activity later on today and into early tomorrow morning to begin materialising across the interior parts and in, across towards southwestern Queensland. We could be seeing some falls between 10 to 25 millimetres out there which is a shadow of the 300 millimeters that some of the forecast models were suggesting about a week ago very happy that that didn't come into fruition it was never going to but again still very happy that that didn't come into fruition that's why we've got to be looking at the forecast model trends and not calling for uh, shots based off one forecast model a lot of people did end up doing that and as such the forecast for southwestern Queensland has been pretty overblown in the last couple of weeks by some forecasts uh, but at this point in time it wasn't a concern considering the rainfall hasn't actually materialized down there Anyways, that is enough talk on Queensland. It's the New South Wales Central Coastline that we've got uh, interesting stuff coming through over the next couple of days. So again, that low pressure system that we're seeing impacts Queensland's uh, coastline right now down in the southeast that's driving those showers ashore, expected to move down offshore from New South Wales as we get through tomorrow and in towards early Friday morning. Now, this system here isn't expected to be a strong one, but it is going to move itself uh, into a position quite uh, close to the New South Wales coastline. And as such, we're going to see some rainfall driven ashore towards the mid-north coast and also down into 
towards the central coast of New South Wales through Thursday night and into Friday morning. Rainfall accumulations won't be heavy because this system here is going to be moving away from the coastline and like I said it's not expected to be too strong so falls between 10 to 25 millimetres look to be widespread through tomorrow and into Friday with the rainfall clearing out by Friday afternoon and evening. We've also got some decent falls expected into the northeast of New South Wales and southeast Queensland once again through Friday night and into early Sunday morning. Rainfall accumulations there as well should be between 25 and 30 millimetres for the wettest of locations with widespread falls between 10 and 30 millimetres expected through Friday and into early Saturday morning. And then this system here is going to be the precursor to the low pressure system that will form offshore from the New South Wales mid north coast through Saturday and into Sunday. This system here is expected to be quite a lot stronger and we're going to see plenty of driving rainfall as a result. So this is how the weather's going to work. We've got that weak low pressure system coming through Thursday and Friday, not too much in the way of rainfall expected, nothing in the way of severe weather, just a few showers here and there before it clears up along the central New South Wales coastline through Friday afternoon and evening. Showers returning through Saturday as another low pressure system moves off the coastline and then showers expected to swing up from the southeast through Saturday and into Sunday before that low pressure system really begins to develop on Sunday. A lot of moving parts to this. I really do hope that you're following quite closely because this is a very confusing and quite a detailed forecast as well. But if it has flown straight over your head, check out the Facebook page and there'll be a detailed post out there as well. But you can see this low pressure system really expected to gather some steam through Sunday and into Monday. And we're expecting a pretty strong low pressure system, if not an east coast low to develop across the mid north coast of New South Wales, somewhere between Newcastle up to Kempsey at this point in time through Monday and into Tuesday. Now, east coast lows are different to tropical cyclones. They're cold cord systems for one, but they also generally don't last as long in east coast lows. As quickly as they form, they do tend to fall apart on themselves after a couple of days. So this system here buffeting the New South Wales coastline between Monday, Tuesday, and then out towards Wednesday before it does start to disintegrate and pull away into the Tasman Sea through Thursday and into Friday. This one I'd actually consider as kind of a long blasting east coast low system as it moves out into the Tasman through the 23rd and out to the 24th of May, completely falling apart in those time periods there. And then it looks like a return to the fine sunny conditions for New South Wales after quite a significant week of rainfall. Now, as you might have been able to tell here, with this east coast lows location uh, position somewhere north of Sydney between Newcastle up to Kempsey or Coffs Harbour, especially through Monday and into Tuesday, we're expecting plenty of driving rain to move in towards New South Wales. And that's how these systems tend to work. Wherever the uh, core of the system is, tend to, it tends to be towards the south and towards the west. The system's core itself is where the heaviest falls are going to be. And considering that this is going to be an, a pretty strong east coast low early on in the season over some warm sea surface temperatures, we're likely to see some very heavy rainfall if this forecast does come into fruition, which leads me on into another moving part of the forecast is the fact that the forecast models are still a little bit uncertain at this point in time. Now, the GFS I generally class as quite a reliable winter weather forecast model, and that kind of uh, shadows over the uh, east coast low forecast, but you can see that the GFS is not calling for anything significant at all, just a few showers moving through into the northeast of New South Wales and pushing in towards southern Queensland, uh, but it's the other forecast models that again have really caught my eye. They're all calling for a significant low pressure system to, give, to begin developing on Sunday and into Monday, and regardless of location, it, it's very good to see that we do have this congruency between the major forecast models at this point in time, and then there's also the axis convective forecast model, which isn't as reliable as both the European and the ICON forecast model, but at this point in time, it is looking uh, to be a, a seemingly quite a reliable forecast model because it is calling for a very similar thing. But I would just like to use the last couple of minutes of <laughs> essentially YAP to illustrate the point that the East Middle Earth, the ICON, the GFS, and the Axis forecast model, the four major forecast models that I have access to using this software, they are all calling for something slightly different, which means that the forecast of this system here is not set in stone at this point in time. The East Middle Earth has that strong East Coast low moving up towards the north and then down towards the southeast eventually, whereas the Axis just takes it right down towards the south. So I would just like to say that we're going to need a couple more days to really see what we can expect with this system here. But regardless of development, if we do see an East Coast low developing offshore from the New South Wales coastline, and we do see those driving rain bands moved into New South Wales, week-long rainfall accumulations will be very high across the New South Wales East Coast. Widespread falls between 50 to 150 millimetres can be expected between the week starting from the 17th out to the 23rd of May. But we could be seeing, and as you can see on these forecast models here, falls up to 300 millimetres possible in some of the wettest of locations. Again, as I've just spent the last uh, couple of minutes trying to uh, drum into everyone's head that the forecast is still very uncertain at this point in time and exactly where the heaviest falls are going to be, when they're going to materialise and in what fashion the rainfall is going to come through is still very much up in arms at this point in time. We're not 100% sure what's going to be happening throughout the next couple of days, but we're going to have a much clearer picture painted for us as we get in towards the later parts of this week and by Friday 
I should be able to say exactly what's going to be happening here when this low pressure system does begin developing. I've never really done proper forecast for East Coast lows, so if this system does fully develop, it will be one of the most detailed forecasts that I'd eventually give for an East Coast low as well. So if you've got any advice or uh, experiences as well, then let me know in the comment section down below. But at this point in time, we're just waiting for this low pressure system to move through the interior parts of Queensland. The precursor energy for it right now is located between Mount Isa and Mackay, and this energy here will take the next couple of days out to about Friday evening to get down towards an area where we will be able to make an accurate forecast on it. So again, we're just kind of waiting for this low pressure system to begin developing for us to be able to make a reasonable and accurate forecast on it. Now, you might be just thinking that there's going to be endless stuff to talk about around Australia, but it's just New South Wales and Queensland that's pumping out the interesting weather for us right now. You can see up in the north, the Northern Territory and far north Queensland, and also especially Western Australia, the wet season well and truly over at this point in time. So rainfall is not a concern up there. Just a few drops of rainfall expected to come in from the southeast for far north Queensland throughout the next 14 days, and falls up to 100 millimetres are possible there over the next 14 days as well. With the next interesting major factor on the forecast model expected to be some significant cold front activity moving down into the southwest of Western Australia some time between the 21st of May out to about the 24th or the 25th and you can see the European forecast model calling for this cold front activity to begin to arrive at the southwest of Western Australia between the 26th and 27th of May so it has been pushed back a little bit again but it does look like a strong cold front is going to come through at some point in towards the third or the fourth week of May and then as we all know with cold fronts they swing out into the Great Australian part and we'll likely see some strong cold front activity developing there and at the very least, Tasmania could expect a bit of a walloping from cold fronts as we get out towards late May. But unfortunately, there is nothing on the cards of South Australia and Victoria, nothing meaningful in the way of rainfall or significant cold front activity. Again, it's going to take quite a lot for them to have their drought broken by those blocking high pressure ridges. They are being absolute menaces at this point in time. And you can see 14 day rainfall accumulations looking absolutely abysmal across South Australia and in towards Western Victoria as well. They desperately need rainfall. Adelaide over the last 16 months has picked up less than 300 millimetres of rainfall, making them truly a desert community at this point in time. The definition of a desert is to have less than 10 inches or 250 millimetres of rainfall in a 12-month period, and that is exactly what Adelaide has experienced so far in the last uh, 15 months with just 300 millimetres falling in the gauge there. So they are truly in an arid climate zone right now, and the rainfall cannot come soon enough for these locations. With only 20 millimetres now in the forecast for parts of South Australia and Western Victoria, it's not going to be enough to do damage to the drought conditions that we've had over there. We desperately need more like 100 or even 150 millimetres to come through over a two week period to begin to saturate their soils down there, but definitely one of the worst droughts that they've had in a long, long while, that's for sure. And then to the southwest of Western Australia, some good falls are expected down here, but again, 40 or 50 millimetres, it's not going to cut the mustard at this time of the year. And when again, we do desperately need some really good rainfall, especially penetrating out into the weed belt. So some strong cold front activity, as in some really strong and severe cold front activity would be very welcome across the southwest of Western Australia at this point in time. But yeah, on that note, that is all that I have time for for today's weather forecast. If you have enjoyed this weather update, then please consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're knocking on the door of 40,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already subscribed, now is a perfect time to do so. And again, from the bottom of my heart, I'd love to thank everybody for the recent support on the channel, on the Facebook, and on every single post that I've been making. Again, it is heartwarming to see, and I'm truly blessed to be in the position that I am right now. That is all for me, to that is all for me today. A special shout out to the channel sponsors, of course, their names on screen screen right now and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.